Today, this is the latest video update on Typhoon Sanba. On this Sunday afternoon, Sanba has made landfall in Okinawa earlier this morning and is now moving into the East China Sea towards uh, South Korea. It was last located approximately 250 kilometers north of the island of Okinawa or roughly 520 kilometers south southeast of the island of Jeju in South Korea. Maximum sustained winds have weakened to 165 km per hour with gusts of up to 240 km per hour. Sandbus has also accelerated to uh, moving northward at 30 km per hour, slightly faster as it inter starts to interact with the jet stream located in uh, this region. Now looking at the latest visible image, the system continues to support that uh, 20 km diameter eye, but is starting to weaken. Uh, looking uh, rather rugged and uh, actually more asymmetrical and also weakening convection all across uh, the uh, the central dense overcast. Now as I said, Sanba made land for earlier this morning along the town of Higashin looking at this, late, this visible image uh, 23 Zulu so at 8 a.m. is that when the, the eye was passing along the northern tip of uh, of Okinawa, and you can see that well-defined eye made landfall. Definitely a solid Category Three look at uh, on this on this uh, visible image, and also late the radar from uh, from Okinawa during that uh, the time frame when it made landfall. This is around 5:45 uh, Japan time. You can see that. Northern Iowa impacting the uh, island of Okinawa and again making landfall near the town of Higashi and James Reynolds Typhoon chaser was able to actually move into Higashi to experience that uh, intense winds Typhoon force winds and also experiencing the calm when the eye of the storm moved past uh, the town you can also see in that radar image during the time very intense rain rates across the eastern side of the eye wall. Rainfall rates of nearly 80 millimeters in an hour, also indicating possibly the strongest winds or where the strongest winds of the system are located. In terms of the winds across Okinawa, reports uh, largely well were actually were below Typhoon Force Cadena. Reported seeing sustained winds around 100 km per hour with a gust of up to 130 km per hour. The rest of the um, stations also reporting nearly the same uh, same wind ranges. In fact, uh, Nago station here reported a uh, lowest pressure of 942 millibars just as the eye moved past. So, uh, well uh, within the uh, intensity estimates from both JTWC and JMA. Also, uh, the airport of Yoronjima, which is located approximately 30 kilometers northeast of the island, reported the highest winds in uh, this uh, chain of islands. This uh, from JMA, using the official uh, reporting stations from JMA, they recorded seeing sustained winds of as high as 140 kilometers per hour, with uh, an instantaneous gust recorded in that airport of 205 kilometers per hour and that was recorded at around 8 a.m. Japan time and looking back here that is when uh, this is the island of Yoronjima and you can see it is well within uh, that eastern eye wall so definitely feeling the strongest winds uh, from uh, from sun and also the fact that the uh, the island is practically open uh, no um, no hindrance in terms of the winds whatsoever so no no, nothing to really slow down that wind. So they had the best chance of seeing that, um, seeing that typhoon force winds. Now, so right now the system is weakening as it moves across East China Sea. Look at the latest microwave image. Uh, we are starting to see some erosion, particularly along the southwestern part of that inner eye wall. Also, that another seems to be another outer wall forming, but. Uh, Again, the system looks uh, starting to look very asymmetrical in, in appearance and also some dry air starting to wrap around from the west and also from the south. So con leading to, to continued uh, weakening in the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. But as of right now, it's still a solid Category th uh, category 2 typhoon. But also looking at the infrared image, we are still seeing some uh, good uh, convective activity. So some pretty good uh, cold cloud tops as well, particularly along the northern 
and eastern side of the system the eye is, is becoming to, to get ragged and uh, con starting to contract as well so indicating that we can also uh, loss of uh, really good uh, really favorable conditions on those sea surface temperatures in this region are starting to decrease rapidly around 26 degrees celsius or below and also wind shear are starting to increase as the jet stream continues to move in from the west but again we are still seeing those convective uh, those cloud tops moving across the island of Amami and the rest of the Kagoshima prefecture. In fact, the latest radar image from JMA is still showing bands of heavy rains moving in across the island of Amami. Okinawa, for the most part, is now clear in terms of heavy rains. They are still re seeing, seeing wi uh, winds of around 60 kilometers per hour. So uh, we'll still continue to see those winds, but again, the rains have, for the most part, ended. Now, in terms of the rainfall amount, so far we're receiving 100 to 200 millimeters across Okinawa and also here across uh, Amami Islands. Um, we will still probably see around 50 millimeters or so in the next three to six hours, but this will probably be the last bands as uh, con the Sanba continues to pull to the north. So expect improving conditions all across the Ryukyu Islands uh, beginning tonight and uh, into tomorrow. Now as for the winds, we are still seeing winds around 80, uh, 80 kilometers per hour sustained. These are sustained winds uh, across Amami and also uh, nearby islands. Um, also, some of those stations uh, continue to gust well into typhoon force winds, one to 120 to 140 kilometers per hour still being reported here in terms of gusts. But again, we expect those winds to start dying down uh, tonight and uh, into tomorrow again, shifting into um, into South Korea by early tomorrow morning and in fact look at the latest 24-hour forecast from JMA forecasting system con to continue moving northward um, again making landfall here along the southern coast of South Korea perhaps uh, 80 kilometers southwest of the city of Busan uh, roughly 12 p.m. South Korean time and you can also see this uh, track here taking Sanba roughly 80 kilometers east of the island of Jeju by 8 a.m. Uh, South Korean time uh, still typhoon force uh, being forecast from JM JMA upon landfall so still formidable typhoon despite the uh, despite the uh, weakening trend uh, we've seen in the past 12 hours or so and into the extended forecast from JMA after making landfall here in South Korea Obviously, the system will weaken to a tropical storm crossing into the Sea of Japan perhaps Monday afternoon or Monday evening. It will also accelerate greatly as it interacts with the increasing upper level winds and also starting to get sheared and perhaps begin extra tropical transition by uh, late Monday, making a second landfall here either in the North Korea or the Russian Far East border at 100 kilometers southwest of the city of Vladivostok. And by that time, it will be a minimal tropical cyclone with winds of probably around 65 kilometers or so we also start uh, transitioning into an extra tropical cyclone by that time so expanding wind field and also that rain showers um, definitely a threat for the Korean Peninsula and also here in China and uh, Russia in the, uh, the next uh, two to three days JDWC and the other else showing a similar forecast here a little bit faster in terms of the forecast track here making landfall in South Korea around uh, morning hours of uh, Monday they are also expecting the system to make landfall as a typhoon see here expecting this system to remain an 80 knot category 1 typhoon uh, roughly 6 hours or so before landfall also passing uh, 100 to 150 kilometers east of Jeju and passing within 100 kilometers west of Busan weakening to a tropical storm by the Monday afternoon crossing into the uh, crossing into the Sea of Japan or East Sea as South Korea calls it and then making a third landfall across North Korea so again the threat remains uh, for South Korea and even in fact across uh, the island of Kyushu as those uh, occasional rain showers could impact um, the western part of the island also here is Sasebo being uh, being shown here on the latest JDW JDWC forecast track Again, uh, the the uh, winds uh, will still be a threat across Jeju and uh, particularly here in Busan, 
as it will be subjected on the uh, on the right front quadrant of the system so experiencing the strongest winds coming from the south and also heavy rains definitely 100 to 200, uh, 200 millimeters of rain also possible here remember uh, this region has been hit by typhoon Bolivin roughly two weeks back and also Tembin so one to hit for this uh, for this region unfortunately we have another typhoon coming in uh, in the form of Sanba so please please prepare and do not take this uh, storm lightly now we take a look at the western pacific basin then we have here Sanba moving to the north and also we have the southwest monsoon the trail of moisture being enhanced by Sanba still affecting mar much of the Philippines particularly across Luzon and parts of Visayas uh, rainfall rates have been generally generally been light in the past 24 hours uh, compared to to what happened in uh, Saturday morning when uh, Friday morning when Metro Manila was hit by uh, heavy rainfall uh, invest 91 w still exists across uh, across the uh, parts of Luzon actually still swirling but not developing much here again not expected to really become uh, a cyclone um, due to that uh, pull and also that increase in wind shear in this region but when you look at here on the eastern side of the western pacific looking at this vigorous moisture vigorous tropical wave here not an invest just yet We'll continue to watch the system as it could definitely become the next player. In fact, a couple of computer models, GFS, the Canadian model, even the European model, forecasting this system to develop in the next uh, five uh, five days or so. So again, we will continue to watch this area. It will be moving westward, perhaps approaching the uh, Marianas Islands, particularly the Guam area, by Tuesday, bringing rain showers there as well. And again, perhaps developing by uh, the latter part of um, this uh, this week meantime all eyes are on typhoon sun but it continues to move north affecting south korea tomorrow morning bringing strong winds and heavy rains for the latest forecast there continue to check south korea's kma korean meteorological administration for the latest official warnings and forecast also if you have images or videos if you've got uh when typhoon sun but hit okinawa also, if you have videos, if you are in South Korea, please share them with us. Email them to us at philippineweather.com. Also, to uh, Robert Spera at westernpacificweather.com. Stay safe, guys.